Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode in Software Engineering and Salesforce. My name is Brooks Johnson, and this week we are going to continue on with part two in our exploration of just testing with Lightning Web Components. And specifically, we're going to pick up right where we left off and continue working through some of the trailhead modules. And this time, and this is, these are some really important ones to get down, we are going to test for asynchronous DOM updates, including event handling. So stick around to the end. Just is super important, and you'll be glad that you. <music> Unit test. Oops, sorry, we are not on our test file. Let's go over to our test file. Right, so we have these methods that we wrote last time, and let's just run them. Let's just make sure everything is still working, right, the way we left it off at. Since it's been a week since I opened up this file. All right, everything is passing. Okay, so and if you remember before, we just did a couple of test the sum function, things like that. Let's minimize that and let's take a look at Trailhead and figure out what do we need to do first. So we're down here in this section on testing asynchronous DOM updates. So what we're essentially, what we're going to do in this test, if you remember our, our JavaScript file, our Lightning Web Component has a public property, right? Decorated with API. We're going to change the value of that public property and make sure that that update is reflected in the DOM, right? So we are going to hop on over and let's write that test. All right, so, and I'm just going to say it should update, update the DOM. All right. Because Trailhead gives us arrow functions, we'll use arrow functions here. Okay, and now, so the first thing we need to do before, just like we're, is, we got to create our element. So we're going to say const element equals, and we're going to use that create element function that Salesforce gives us as part of the LWC jest package. And we need to create c dash unit test. And is is unit test. We're doing that. We're gonna load in our value into the DOM, load in the HTML, and now we need to append this to the DOM. So we're gonna say document dot body dot append child element. All right. So we've created our element and we have appended it to the DOM. Now. Let's get our div, just like before. I'm going to say const div equals element dot shadow root dot query selector div. All right, so we're going to get the element name div. Now what we need to do is we need to update our the API property in our JavaScript file. So if you remember, right, we'll take a look. We have this API unit number. So if that changes, right, it's got this default value here. But if it changes, it should be reflected in our markup right there, where it's bound to the unit number result. Let's go back to our test. And I'm going to say element dot unit number equals 6. Not element. Let's fix our typo. All right. And now let's write our assertion. So we expect div text content dot to be unit Six. Remember before it was unit five alive. Exclamation. And let's run that one. And it should fail, right? It did not change. So we expected unit six alive, and we got back unit five. Now, 
The reason this is, and this is critical to writing almost any of the Jest tests you're going to do, is that the DOM updates asynchronously. So we didn't give it time to update before we checked for the change. So what we need to do here, and Salesforce shows us in trailer, we have to add this line, return prompt. We're going to return a resolved promise. Just kind of flushing out, giving it a chance for the DOM to update, and then we're going to check it over. So let's go back in. And what I'm going to do is return promise dot resolve dot then. And I'm going to go down. I'm just going to take this line. And I'm just going to put it up here. All right. And now let's rerun that same test. And it should pass. Got a semicolon in there. Everything's to be run and slowed. Okay, so now it passed, right? And that's, again, this is key thing to remember, right? Anytime you're testing for a DOM update, they happen asynchronously. You need to kind of just flush a promise through, a resolve promise, let the system update. Now, the next thing we're going to test for, and we'll go back to our trailhead, is that we're going to test on an event, right? And we're going to add a value. So we're going to basically, the idea being we're going to we want it to change when there's an input field and that value changes. Okay, so what we're going to do is write our last test. Okay, and I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to say it should update on event. Fix my typo there. Okay. And just like before, we're going to create our element. I'm going to say const element, create element, and tab 9 is pretty good with JavaScript, so it's just going to bang that out for me. And I'm going to say document.body.appendChild element, just like before. I'm going to go get my div, element.shadowroot, just like before, right? We're going to query that div. Now we also want to get, uh, I'm going to say const input equals element dot shadow root dot query selector. And I want to get a lightning input. So right away, we should know this is going to fail, right? Because there is no lightning input on our markup. Lightning input. All right, so let's take a look. What else did we have to do for this test to pass? All right, okay, so we're going to assign it a value. We're going to dispatch a change event. So we're going to say input dot, dot value equals seven. And now our input, we're going to have it input dot Dispatch event change. Well, how about new custom event, right? That's not going to work. New new custom event change. Let's clean up our typos here. All right, and now we're going to write our assertion. We're going to say expect div dot text content dot to be unit seven alive. All right, we're going to run that, and again, we we know it's going to fail because we haven't written the production code to make a pass yet. But let's fail it, and let's see what we get back. All right. 
And not set property value of null, right? So we're, we're, we're trying to set a value on something that's not even on the DOM yet. So just to make sure we don't have any issues as we work through this with any typos, I'm going to go over and I'm just going to copy this right off a of trailhead. I'm going to go to my HTML file and I'm going to stick that input value right in there. Now the next thing we need to do, right, we have it on change. We have to give it a handle change. And so let's again, we're going to go to trailhead and we're just going to copy the event handler straight off a of trailhead. All right, so now we've got, we actually have the input element on our markup. We have the change handler right in our JavaScript file. So now if we run this test again, it should pass. But you know what? It is not because I think I forgot something of my own, right? So let's take a look. Let's, it's not going to pass. And you know why it's not going to pass? Because <laughs> just like we did five seconds ago, the DOM updates asynchronously, right? So we also have to put this inside a resolved promise. Return. Promise. Not resolve. Dot then. All right. Same thing. Let's take this. Now let's run it. There you go, it passed, and that's all there is to it. To pull JAS tests to test for DOM updates asynchronously. Big thing to remember, right, is you have to you have to work to have a resolve promise just to give yourself a chance to let the DOM update so then you can check it in your JAS tests. Hope this was helpful. If it was, take a second, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, everybody.